what are the best drills to improve your driver play? Today we're meeting up with PGA golf professional Jack Backhouse to find out. Driver can be one of the hardest things to practice in winter because we kind of just get stuck going to the range, beating balls. What are some like good drills people can do to like work on different elements of like the driver? Something that I see at the range all the time is people hitting but mindlessly bucket book 100 balls hitting 100 balls with the driver spraying it all over the show and then walking away like that was a good like that was a good deal where i think what we have to do in practice you know in winter when it's dark and whatever is we need to work on very specific parts of the swing or the shot we're trying to hit because usually with you're driving there's there's probably one or two things that are wrong and that you can really target with practice and drills so the first, the first drill I really like for driver is all about sort of club face control and start line. So you can do that with a couple of sticks. And what I'll do is I'll set up almost like some goal posts, three yards in front of the ball. They can vary in, in width depending on how good you are and how wide you hit it. So I would usually go sort of about a foot, foot and a half, and then try and align that sort of either down your initial start line. So if I fade it, I'm gonna want those goal posts slightly to the left or if I want to hit a draw, I need the goalpost slightly to the right. I'll then just try and hit shots and my sole focus is getting it through the posts. Sort of the end result should take care of itself, but actually I'm not worried about it at all. And I'd hit 10 balls and score myself. I um, think that's I'll... quite nice as well, because a lot of times you can go to a range where the golf ball might not necessarily be that good. Yeah. So actually looking at the like down range dispersion is not actually that necessarily reflective on how well you've hit it. Yeah. Because they're not necessarily spinning right, it could be really windy and the wind could hit it. So having that focus of, well, I've started it in this area, like I know that was a decent like face angle to path. Yeah, it, it, definitely. I, I think if you're a wayward hitter, just getting your start line under control is like a huge win because you, you'll definitely hit more fairways and you'll quickly realize what your pattern is. If you hit every ball to the right, you know, and you're a slicer, then that's quite obvious, isn't it? So it can be a really good way of like giving yourself a bit of feedback and it's because it's a scorable game over the winter, you can sort of like test yourself and see if you're improving and stuff like that. Now, a lot of amateur golfers struggle with attack angle with driver. They're gonna hit down on the ball loads. What's something we could do to practice that? So the first thing, which is a really good drill, but people won't like doing it because they're, they're in, they're in danger of skying the driver it's just pegging the ball up really high. So if you're at a range with like adjustable electric tees, just getting it on the highest setting, or if you use a castle tee, the orange one, or just get off grass, just teeing it up as high as the tee will balance the ball on, you will have to figure out a way of not skying it. And generally that will mean swinging up on the ball, hitting more up on it. And obviously that'll give you more distance. But another thing you can do is with a head cover or a box of balls, Stick, stick the you know about a foot in front of the ball and just try and hit some shots where you swing and don't hit the head cover. I really like these ones because it's painful to have to <laughs> walk and pick your head cover down off the range, especially if it's busy. Again, it's just going to make you sort of swing back and think about right. I need to stay behind it. You know, make sure that the club's getting over the head cover. And again, when you're doing these drills, it's really important that you you're not worrying about the results. You know, you're working on something really specific. All we're trying to do here is how many out of 10 can I miss the head cover? And again, score yourself. Don't really care where the ball goes because we're working on angle of attack. We're not worrying about target and stuff like that. You should probably take those sticks out. We'll take those sticks out, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to get it over no. the head cover well, and if, through if, the sticks. If you're feeling really frisky, you could definitely combine them, but uh, we get pretty crazy. So club path, a big thing a lot of golfers struggle with. Yep. How could we work on that at the driving range? Uh, so, two drills we can do for path one of them includes the head cover again this one's a really sort of easy obvious one that people will have done before and that's just putting the head cover if you're a slicer outside the ball to swing on the inside of or if you're a hooker of the ball on the inside of to swing outside of i really like physical barriers because it, it forces you to do something different to avoid whatever the barrier is. And I think it gives people feedback. So a lot of times people might keep hitting balls and they'll maybe tweak something in their face or the grip to make the ball go straight. They don't realize the path's still bad. They've yes. just found another way to get around it. So yeah. if this like, it's physically showing you like, no, you're still doing that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. To get someone in a new position, people don't really understand how exaggerated that is gonna feel to get into a new position. 
you know it might feel like you've moved the club a foot but it's really moved an inch having the head cover there is it or whatever you choose to put down is really good because it, for, for me to avoid that head cover it's going to feel like i'm casting the club way over when actually the swing's going to look fairly normal but that it can make a big difference on the shot so let's tie a few of those things together. Attack, angle and path, probably two things that's combined because typically people are slices, they're hitting down on the golf ball. Yep. So what's something people could do if they wanted to work on like both of those things at once? So a, a sort of a, a more of a swing drill um, than a, a driver specific drill that I like to have people do um, is what I, sort of I refer to as the bowler drill. So if you, were going, if you were bowling, watching a professional bowler and they throw the ball, the foot kicks out and they give it some spin, if we drop our right foot back quite a long way and we're just sort of using it for balance more than we are putting any pressure on it as we swing back and swing down it's going to force us to a so it get more on the inside because there's now all this room for our hands to travel in and also we're going to it'll force you to lean back because it's sort of you'll you'll fall off balance if you come over the top and steep by dropping that right foot back and just working on turning back and turning through you definitely swing more on the inside and forces you to finish in a much more extended position where your angle of attack will definitely be more on the up than down. Whoa. Beauty. Foot slip and everything. Right, lastly, strike location. Yep, so um, something with, with drivers, um, I think there's now, they're so forgiving, people are often unaware of where they actually strike the ball out the face where the strike location is such a determining factor in the shape of the shot and the start direction and stuff it, you know it's so important and i think high handicappers generally are unaware completely unaware there's a few ways you can do this uh, the first is like shoe spray or whatever it is spray the face so the face goes white hit a shot and you'll be able to see the location of the ball you can also just do it with wet because it's wet and um, so if the face is a bit damp or the ball's a bit damp when you make a swing and hit a shot you should be able to see. It's quite disappointing that that's in the middle. I was that's trying to fairly it was central, be like yeah, yeah, no. Right on the toe, like embarrass you a I little bit. Know, you <laughs> um, and generally, again, you can sort of see, you'll see, you hit a few balls and you'll see a pattern. So that was a bit low, but it's in the middle, so it's fine. You might just tee it up a bit more. But slicers will see the ball out of the heel. Uh, so then you can do drills to try and move it across. A good drill I've seen someone do before is spray the face so it's white draw a cross and then hit four balls and see if you can hit high toe low toe high heel low heel and then center because you know if you can do stuff like that then you you really sort of mastered the ability to control your strike and hitting it straight becomes so much easier if you hit the ball out the middle of the face every time that it's um you've got to be aware of it yeah i think that's quite interesting because a lot of like speaking to a lot of fitters from brands some of the tour pros will consciously try strike it like Obviously not massively off the toe, but maybe one or two ball dimples off the toe yeah. if they really don't want to say like miss right. Yeah, yeah. Because they know it's going to turn over a little bit more. Yeah. So having that ability to be able to move the strike. Yeah. And uh, even just thinking, oh, I'm really slicing it today. Like, let's try and feel like I'm hitting it off the toe like I did on the range. And it's going to help that bit. Yeah, definitely. You know, if you've got water left, pegging it down low and trying to hit it out of the heel so that you're definitely going to slice it. Is, you know, is a good option. The first step in that is just know where you're striking it because I, I don't think anyone is really aware of where they're hitting it. I mean, you know, it's amazing that top rows can move it so small, but we've just got to start with where do I even hit it regularly? If you've got a black driver, often they'll, you'll see a wear pattern. Yeah. Or if you, if you really slice it, you'll see like scratches across the face. Yeah, you just become aware of it and try and improve it.